Welcome to Nugget 118 with Steve Groman, and today we will be talking about one of the most fabulous places on earth, the Tibetan Plateau. Yeah, I know why you like it, because it's right there at K2 and Mount Everest, right? Right, and I definitely want to go to Nepal, and I'd love to go to Tibet. That's on the top of my bucket list. You have a skirt from Nepal? I have a skirt from Nepal. I have a shirt from Nepal. Nice. And I have, even better than that, I have a rock from Nepal that a pastor got me. He was going on the trail to Mount Everest. He didn't climb it, but he did go on the trail and he picked up a rock for me because a lot of people know I collect rocks from all yes. over the world. And we have them in the motorhome. Yes, we do. Lots of rocks. Lots of rocks. Today we're going to talk about a science news article from April of 2019. The article says Tibetan Plateau isn't as old as thought. World's roof reached current height after 25 million years ago. Yes, and once again, everything that they do is assumption of evolution, obviously. How often have we read these kind of articles where it's not as old as we thought. It's not what we thought. It's uh, younger than we thought. It's newer than we thought. They're always having to change their mind because they find evidence that doesn't fit. A plant fossil discovered in rocks from the Tibetan Plateau and a new analysis of the area's geochemistry are rewriting the uplift history of the region dubbed the Roof of the World. And it's called the Roof of the World because it's at 4.5 kilometers, which is over three miles high. And this compares to Antarctica, which the ice, they report, is over over 14,000 feet deep. This is one of the two tallest regions on Earth. Yes, and along with, again, Everest right there near it and uh, K2 also right there near it. This thing is almost a million square miles. It's like 980,000 square miles. It's a huge plateau. They thought that this place was around 45 million years old, and then they thought, well, now it's 25 million because the problem is they found a palm. Right, and that doesn't square up with the history of what their understanding is as to the weather conditions in that in that region, much less the time frame back where they're talking about. This article goes on and says, scientists want to pinpoint the timing of the rise in large part because Tibetan Plateau has had such a profound effect on climate. The plateau altered atmospheric patterns causing the onset of monsoons in South Asia and the drying out of Asia's interiors, says paleoclimatologist. They always will say these kind of things and they'll always have computer programs and computer models to show how they can plug it in. But we always have to remember, whenever you read or hear any article, any any news comment about any kind of thing like this, they are always feeding the thing, the information that they want it to spit out. And that's always a very, very important point. This article goes on to say, in fact, the plateau is so tall that it affects the atmosphere globally, altering temperatures and precipitation and humidity and cloud cover. But it says about 55 million years ago, the Indian subcontinent rammed northward into Asia and the land between them buckled. We cover the idea of plate tectonics actually in a couple of different lessons. There's nothing that actually indicates that truly did happen. This is all conjecture. The the Himalaya mountain range was born and the Tibetan plateau north of the mountain was pushed upward. And this is what we want to talk about is that they have been saying for years, and this is a, a copy from a... Just a school textbook, a Holt Reinhardt Winston Earth Science textbook from 1989, saying the exact same thing. The Himalayas were sh- shown below were formed when India collided with Asia. They've always been saying the same thing, but they keep changing their mind about what it did. But as we discussed, continents slamming into each other, number one, would be chaotic and it would destroy any fossils that are there in the first place. It would just pulverize everything uh, if that were to happen. But also, often these mountain ranges have bent, twisted, folded, uplifted strata. You cannot fold rock. You can fold soft mud. All this stuff was laid out at the time of the flood. We'll end up talking about that here in a minute. We do cover all this extensively in After the Flood, Lesson 4. And here's the Tibetan Plateau. It's the largest plateau on Earth. Mount Everest rests at the base of it. It's at 29,028 feet or 8,848 meters. So the plateau is half the height of Mount Everest. In this article, they just go back and forth with all these different time frames. And as we've mentioned in previous nuggets, we're all looking at the same evidence coming to totally different ways to get to the same conclusions. The team took these factors into account in a series of computer simulations to recreate atmospheric circulation, and then they recalculate the oxygen, and that's all they do. If, if they need it to say something, they just feed it different information, recalculate it, let the program spit out the results, and then they say that's what happened. The timing gels with the age of a fossilized palm tree leaf found in the central Tibetan plateau. Paleobotanist Tao Su of the Chinese Academy of Science in Mingla and colleagues date the fossil to about 25 million years ago. Based on the ability of the plant's living relatives, 
convince all tropical and subtropical species to tolerate cold. The team concludes that at the time, the region couldn't have been more than about 2.3 kilometers above sea level. They have proof of a subtropical, tropical environment. What they found is proof of the pre-flood world. And so now they have to result to their mindset that millions of years ago, right. the climate must have been different. Right. Well, and, and we know that. Right. And, and the elevation wasn't the same, so it must not have risen when they thought it did. And the Bible does say that this whole earth was tropic environment in the original creation. It doesn't say it was a tropic environment, but it does say there was no rain in the original creation all the way up to the time of the flood. If there was no rain, then there can be no clouds. If that's true, and it is, then there's less than 10 degrees of temperature change anywhere, any two locations on earth. It was a perfectly stable environment. There's evidence all over this earth that a tropic, subtropic type of vegetation lived literally everywhere. They find it in the North Polar region. They find it everywhere. Once again, the Bible has the actual explanation written before the finds. These people find things and they have to come up with new ideas as to try to how to explain them away. As we read these last few sentences, put the Noahic flood filter on them instead of the evolutionary filter that these people are using. But to really understand the history of the plateau, paleo-altimetry needs to incorporate the geologic history of the region, he adds. You need to get the topography right. If you have the wrong Tibetan geometry, you cannot produce realistic results. Boyston agrees. Adding in a deep valley landscape to her simulation would really be interesting. Well... Just toss it in there. Again, we've got mountains rising, valleys sinking down. We've got a tropical environment evidenced in fossils. We've got the pre-flood world. We've got the action of the flood. We've got what the Bible says. We don't have to throw in millions of years and computer models. We just have to look at the evidence straightforward through a biblical worldview. Right, and we do not have to rework our simulations, and we don't have to recalculate anything. The Bible was written a long time ago, and the evidence still confirms. When these people, they have their story written, they find other evidence, they have to rewrite it. But we've never had to rewrite it. It still says the same it's always said. And we found this uh, from the Zishuang Bana Tropical Botanical Garden, the Chinese Academy of Sciences, which I would love to go there too. it's a beautiful place. And here's a picture of the palm fossil. And the palm fossil suggests Tibet had high mountains and deep valleys. We have to go back to the beginning, what we're talking about. This is the largest plateau on earth, a level region. And they're saying it couldn't have been level. It is, they call it roof of the world. The roof of the world because of its elevation. Elevation, and it's a very flat area. And what did you look up? It's a million square feet almost. It's just under. Yes, it's like 980, 970, something like that, thousand uh, square miles. These people from the Chinese Academy of Sciences are the ones who found it, and they basically have the same information. Yeah, Psalm 104 overviews everything. The related foundations of the earth that it should not remove forever. Now covers it with the deep as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. We've got water above the mountains. At thy rebuke, they fled. At the voice of thy thunder, they hasted away. God has something to say. They go up by the mountains. Mountains, they go down by the valleys unto the place which thou hast founded for them. God made those mountains rise and the deep valleys out there sink. When that happens, of course, all kinds of uh, uh, activity is going to be taking place on the strata layers that are there that are not rock yet. They've been laid down during the time of this flood. And during the time of the flood, then af- after halfway through about 150 days, the Bible says, then the mountains rose, the valleys sank down. So it's going to cause washouts. It's going to cause plateaus. All the effects that we see are going to be caused and can be caused by the mechanism of the flood. And that's why we have weather after the flood. The Bible talks about seasons being after the flood. Genesis 8, 22, yes. And the Science News article even talks about how this plateau affects the weather on the whole earth. And we know that the earth that we see today is not the original creation, how it was designed. And it is the mountains. It is the valleys. It is the larger oceans. This is what is creating our weather that we have today. So everything dovetails. Beautifully. When you look at the evidence. Everything dovetails beautifully and is explained. Again, the mechanism of the flood in the Bible was written a long time before any of these discoveries, but yet it still shows to be accurate. All right. Well, thank you. And we do ask you to please tell a friend or family member about our YouTube channel. Please help us to double our subscribers this month. Thank you. Thank you.